Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today we're reviewing the Manfrotto MT055 CX Pro 4 tripod. Now just to start off, I thought I would talk about the different types of tripods that you can buy. The reason I want to do that is I made a lot of mistakes when I first got into photography. First tripod I bought was an own brand from a high street camera store about 15 years ago. And it was made of aluminium, which is fine, a lot of tripods are, but they were extremely thin aluminium legs. The uh, tripod head was integrated and it had a plastic mechanism which wasn't very stable. And the result was that this tripod, although extremely light, was practically useless. Long exposures when I tried to take them would be um, completely blurry because the uh, actual camera had moved on top of it and back then in the film days this is even more disappointing because you couldn't actually see that this was happening until it was too late and you'd had your film processed. So then when you sort of start moving on your journey in photography as I did um, I then essentially started buying slightly better brands but they were still very cheap tripods and I continued to struggle with the quality of the images that I was getting as a result. Eventually, I bought my first Manfrotto tripod. It was the 190, uh, I think it was the X-Pro B series, but there may have been a standard 190 before then, I, I can't quite remember. Um, but it was a revelation. Suddenly, I was able to use my camera in situations where, you know, I needed it rock steady for a long period of time, and this tripod was doing that. What's more, it had a lot more flexibility in terms of being able to move the angles on the legs. And it also had a center column that you could be moved as well. This isn't something that you get on all tripods. The thing is, this particular tripod that I have here, when it was first released, cost in the region of 500 pounds, which is a huge amount of money. You can also see why someone, especially someone like me, very young, first getting into photography, might walk into a camera store and think, well, if I can spend £20 on a tripod, why wouldn't I? After all, I don't need a £500 tripod, and arguably you don't. I think there are the benefits that you need to weigh up in your mind when thinking about what kind of tripod you need, and thinking that through before you go out and make a purchase can save you a huge amount of money in the long run. This particular tripod is so expensive because it's made of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is obviously extremely light, which means this tripod weighs just a smidge over two kilograms, and it's also extremely strong and rigid. So this will, this will take a weight of up to nine kilograms, according to Manfrotto, that I'm fairly certain you could put a lot heavier items on here without needing to worry. Another reason why this particular tripod is quite so, uh, quite so good in my opinion is the fact it's actually made of four sections and the reason for this is that it allows the tripod to be smaller in this case 54 centimeters now that's important because if you only have carry-on luggage this will actually fit inside it um, diagonally across it also fit in your main luggage a lot easier as well which means if you're traveling you're more likely to bring this with you now, if you wanted just to buy the 055 series from Manfrotto, which is fantastic, you could buy an aluminium version of this tripod for a lot less money. In fact, I think they cost around £150 or up to £150 at the moment, which is something of a steal. That being said, as I said, when this first launched, this was £500, but now if you do a bit of uh, sleuthing on the internet, you should be able to find it for closer to £250 maybe even less if you're able to find a few voucher codes. That's extremely good value for a lot of actual technology in this. If you look at the Gitso Traveler series, which is probably one of the most well-known high-end tripod brands, their carbon fiber tripods cost upwards of a thousand pounds. So something like this actually looks like it's really good value. But as I was saying, these have a lot of features, and I'd like to talk you through some of them and explain why I think this is one of the best value tripods you can buy at the moment if you need a lightweight, travel-friendly, sturdy tripod. Now, as I mentioned, 
this is made out of four sections. So you have a very small section here, which is your sort of um, final extension, which takes this tripod up to uh, 170 meters, centimeters, if every one of these is extended plus the center column. And you have obviously the much thicker top end. Now, when you're using this, I always recommend you start with the uh, top ones and then you move your way down. So you use the, in theory, less rigid um, leg last. A feature I like a lot about this particular tripod is these quick power locks. Now, I think Manfrotto has been using one version or another of these for a long time, but I much prefer them to the screw-in uh, versions that even Gitso uses. I find the screw versions are much slower to use and actually give you less predictability. With these, I know with, when it's open and when it's shut. Another feature, and I think this is the standout feature of this tripod, is the center column. Now the center column has the ability to rotate 90 degrees, which allows you to get much closer to the ground, as I'm gonna demonstrate. You would simply undo this little clasp here, which then allows you to push the center column up. That's in theory, uh, the max height. Then you press the bot button on the bottom, which moves the entire mechanism upwards. You can then flick it downwards and across. It locks in place, you can audibly hear it. And then you simply tighten that screw in again, which I am definitely untightening, so we'll just go the other way. <laughs> and there you have it, a stable center column now pointing at 90 degrees. Why would you want this? Well, if you're shooting nature photography, it would allow you to get much closer to, ground, to the ground, especially in combination with the legs, which can move out up to 90 degrees. So if you imagine, if this tripod is, is you know, you have all three legs out, is on the ground like that, you can have your, your camera about two inches off the ground if you want, which is fantastic. And again, all of this is very quick. Undo the pin, push the center column through, you then just slide it back in place, all the way down, and you're done. It really is as simple as that. Another thing which uh, Manfrotto is making a fair bit of song and dance about, if you look at their website, is uh, this little connection here. They call it Easy Link. It's basically a standard uh, tripod connector link. It would allow you to connect, um, for instance, uh, an arm, which you could attach a reflector to, or if you're shooting video, you could attach a light to it. In practice, um, I don't really see the point, I have to be honest. Um, I find if I'm starting to attach things to the side of my tripod, you're gonna start to induce sort of um, a bit of movement, which isn't a good thing. Um, but, you know, I'm sure there are people and use cases that will find that useful. Um, but if you don't want to use it, obviously you can just leave it. Um, as with all Manfrotto tripods I can think of, um, it has this little connection up here. It allows you um, to basically hang your bag from uh, the tripod, uh, which gives it a little bit more rigidity. And I think that's something that's important, especially with carbon fiber tripods. Carbon fiber is light, and if you're carrying this with you all day, that is fantastic because it means you're much likely to actually carry it with you. Um, I know many people who, have a tripod in their car and it barely gets any further, but this one I'm actually inclined to take with me because it's not too heavy. But the downside of it is if it's a very windy day, you are going to have a tripod which at maximum height might actually be inclined to sway a little bit. So attaching your camera bag to this little latch on the side will stop that from happening. Obviously, um, this tripod being a slightly more high-end one doesn't come with a tripod head. You have to choose your own. Um, personally, I use this. Um, it's the uh, just an eye myself. The X Pro B um, ball head. It's it's a pretty good ball head to be honest with you. Um, it's not quite as fancy as the hydrostatic uh, ones that you can get. But um, just to demonstrate, obviously, just screw it in place um, and. If I just move the tripod down, realizing I haven't really thought through quite how high the tripod is versus uh, 
obviously filming area, but that's fine. Um, just to give you an idea. So with it on, you obviously get an extra couple of inches as well. So that takes the um, actual full height of the tripod to about 170, I think it's about 178, 180 centimeters, which for me um, being about 190 centimeters tall um, is perfect. So you wouldn't really want it much higher than that. And I think there are tripods you can get that will go higher, but they're very specific use cases. And I think if I think about it, usually studio or, or video um, tripods. So that is the MT055CX Pro 4 tripod. Um, definitely one of Manfrotto's more interesting um, tripods that they have. They also have the 190 series, which you can also get in carbon fiber and aluminum. And as I said, you can get this in aluminum too. Um, and the 190 series is probably worth considering if you want to save a bit of money. I think you um, lose a bit of the top height if I remember correctly, uh, but don't quote me on that. I hope you found this video useful. Um, hopefully you'll be able to do uh, some more videos around tripod use in the future. Um, if you have any questions about this tripod, please do pop them in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to help. Um, equally, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.